As we kick off today, I want you to hear this mysterious word. It's amazing. 2 Corinthians 3.18 says that we behold in the word of God as in a mirror the glory of the Lord and we are constantly being transfigured um, into his very own image in ever increasing glory from one degree of glory to another. Then listen to this. This comes from the Lord who is the Holy Spirit. Father, right now, we thank you for your precious Holy Spirit on assignment right here with us, helping to declare the word, to disclose the word, and transmit it into our lives so that we're changed. We never want to take for granted the access we have to you, precious Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Listen to this, the art of thanksgiving. And I've got my special helper, Pam, with me today. (laughs) We're going to talk about the art of thanksgiving and all that God has for you in that. Look, regardless of what time of year it is, people want more joy, more happiness. Special occasions tend to bring a hope that maybe something special will happen to bump up that joy and happiness level, Pam. Look, today, Pam and I want to give you a simple, practical insight that will promote your joy and happiness level. And it all starts with this, the amazing art of thanksgiving, right? Yes, it's <laughs> art. <laughs> when the advantage of knowing God is strangely considered a disadvantage, you know, we have a problem, Houston. Spiritual blindness is the cultural norm causing this confusion today. It's all born out of a failure to be thankful. Our society has lost its advantage to unthankfulness. Malcolm Gladwell, famous best-selling author, wrote this, and I believe it was in his book, David and Goliath. He said, what we think of as an advantage and as a disadvantage is not always correct. We mix the categories up. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a big mix-up. So what does Thanksgiving have to do with your joy level, with our joy level? Just for fun sometime, think of the most unthankful people that you know. Notice how joyless they are. Some are even downright cranky, not fun to be with. Let me show you something right here. Your level of joy is directly related to your level of peace. Joy cannot show up where there is no peace. And to the degree that you are thankful, then peace can manifest to a greater level. So thankfulness, thankfulness ultimately steers your peace. Then finally, your joy. Mm. Isn't that good, Pam? It's really good. Someone once said this, gratitude is a powerful catalyst for happiness. That's so true. You know, a lot of people, they'll have, they think that they'll have joy if they have more money or power. And there's a lot of wealthy people and powerful people who have zero joy in their life because they have zero peace in their life. And I love, you studied with a, a, a rabbi in, in, through the years, and the word for peace in the Hebrew is shalom. And, and the full ancient meaning of, of shalom is the destruction of the authority of chaos and then nothing broken nothing missing, and nothing lacking. Wholeness, shalom. How's that for a greeting? (laughs) Oh, can you just imagine? Shalom, Bob. Destruction on the authority of chaos in your life, then nothing lacking, nothing missing, and nothing broken, and and you have a good day too, Jimmy. You know, isn't that good? Well, that's what we're saying. That's right. Without shalom, without peace, you can't hold the joy. Remember Psalm 16, verse 11, it says, in the presence of the Lord, there is joy. Perfect peace is also in God's presence because chaos or stress or anxiety cannot exist there. Enemies of God melt like wax. They evaporate. Pam, they disappear. They cease to exist in the presence of God. It's perfect peace in his presence. Think about Isaiah 26, verse 3. It says, God, you will keep him or her in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Perfect shalom. Well, that's like an open door to a flood wave of joy. There is joy in the presence of God. Okay, so that leads me to the powerful subject of this message, the art of thanksgiving. You know, like there was a book called The Art of War. So I'm not just talking about art with crowns and paint, which is wonderful, but we're talking about something very strategic here. How do we get peace so that we can have joy? Thanksgiving. 
Look at this, Psalm 100, verse 4. Pam, would you read it for us? Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. Oh my goodness, that's beautiful. Spiritual protocol for accessing God's presence is, Pam, thanksgiving. That's how high a priority this amazing art is. You enter God's gates with thanksgiving, period. You could pray, God, give me your perfect peace so that I can have your overflowing joy. Well, that's a good place to start, but let me remind you of this. Galatians chapter five says, peace and joy are fruits of the Holy Spirit. Many Christians have fruit on their trees, but no consciousness of how to harvest it. This is where thanksgiving comes in. Jesus himself, Pam, used thanksgiving to multiply. That's how he multiplied the five loaves and the two fish. He use thanksgiving. That's right. The famous author and motivational speaker Zig Ziglar once said this, gratitude is the healthiest of all human emotions. The more you express gratitude for what you have, the more likely you will have even more to express gratitude for. Oh, I like that. Without a thankful heart or knowing how to work the art of thanksgiving, the wonderful fruit on your trees can't be recognized, reached, or harvested. What? God can't just give me peace like I asked for it? Hey, you can have an account, but if you've forgotten your password, you can't get what you have. Too many people live life without access to what is legally, truly, spiritually theirs. It's so good. And remember what true shalom and peace means. It means nothing lacking, nothing missing, nothing just complete wholeness. So how can you have peace if you are unthankful and therefore you don't recognize or can't access this provision, then you don't have peace. To believe God for a car, but not want a license to possess is not access. Can you just imagine how many Christians when we get to heaven only to find out how much God gave us, but we didn't access oh. by by being thankful and grateful. And we never got to see all the wonderful treasures that God intended us to have on this earth. That's a good thought, Pam. You need a thankful heart to perceive and lay hold of the shalom of God. An unthankful heart will make you blind to God's provision. That's scary. His presence, it'll make you blind to his presence. It'll make you ignorant of his goodness and unbelieving or hard to his answers. Pam, let's take a look at Romans 1 verses 21 to 22. For even though they knew God as the creator, they did not honor him as God or give thanks for his wondrous creation. On the contrary, they became worthless in their thinking, godless with pointless reasonings and silly speculations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools. Claiming to be wise, they what? Became fools. Oh, there is a danger, a great dangerous decline that overtakes us when we refuse to give God thanks. Look at that verse again. They knew God, but would not give God thanks for his works. It begins this spiral down of degeneration. Unthankful people become worthless in their thinking. Well, there goes all the peace and there goes all the possibilities to experience true joy. They become experts at pointless reasonings. Their heart gets darkened. They claim to be wise, but now they've become full-blown fools. Why? They withheld from God. They withheld the very thing that is spiritual protocol to his presence. Thanksgiving. Albert Einstein once said this, there are only two ways to live your life. One is as though nothing is a miracle. The other is as though everything, everything, is a miracle. The art of thanksgiving is all about recognition. We have so many people today on antidepressants and other mental health medications. It's sad. Those medications have very serious side effects, including suicidal thoughts. And everyone has been told that if they could just get this or feel that or experience this, then you'll have joy and then you'll be happy. 
Any change will make you happy. Any euphoric feeling will suddenly make you happy. That's what they're being told. Shock your system with something that challenges your fear level. Go sky jumping, swim with sharks, or have some forbidden experience. Then you'll get some perspective. But my friend, it's all a lie. Jesus said, if your perspective is set on not having, he said you will lose even what you do have. You know, Thanksgiving turns on the spiritual light of proper perspective. Say that again. I like that. You know, Thanksgiving turns on the light, the spiritual light of proper perspective. So good. Yeah. So good. So much more than a glass is half full perspective, right, Pam? Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving is powerful. It grabs God's attention. It actually can't be done except by faith. What I mean is you cannot be thankful to God without using your faith in God to express it. In fact, God considers your thankfulness the one true act of sacrifice that he regards as acceptable. That's right. And in Hebrews 13, 15, it says, through him, therefore, let us at all times, at all times, at all times, offer up to God a sacrifice of praise, which is this, the fruit of our lips that thankfully acknowledges, thank thankfully confesses, and thankfully glorifies his name. I love the way you read that, Pam. God defines a sacrifice of praise as your words, the fruit of your lips, that thankfully acknowledge, thankfully confess, and thankfully glorify His name. Even God, my friend, even God considers your thankfulness such a sacrifice when you give it to Him, but He accepts it, He approves it, He esteems it spiritually strong medicine. Oh, I love that. I've shared this principle, this principle of wisdom with you before, but it bears repeating in the light and the context of this message. What you celebrate comes to you. You know, celebration is like thankfulness. What you are thankful for, it comes to you. What you celebrate comes to you, but what you fail to recognize or what you're unthankful for or fail to be thankful for, it will move away from you. It'll leave your life. So let me ask you, do you celebrate your health? Do you celebrate the right people in your life? Do you celebrate having a job? I didn't ask you if you like your job, but are you thankful that you have a job? One posture repels future opportunities while the other one attracts future opportunities. Do you celebrate access to God's word, to his mentors that unfold the word of God accurately in your life? Do you? You know, when Pam and I were first married, we began to do this. Pam, remember? We started these, what we call the, the top 10 countdown, 10 things that we're thankful for to help give us perspective, especially when we're in difficult situations. Yeah, especially. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Let's do that right now. Like, let's just show the folks so that they can practice it at home and they can do this top 10 count. It's so easy. Like, I would kind of count it out for us and I would start and I would go, Father, I'm thankful for my relationship with you through Jesus that I, we're children of God. I'm. That's what... Number one is, I'm thankful for that. Pam? Okay, well, I'm thankful for you, <laughs> my prince. <laughs> well, here's another big one. Number three, I'm, I'm so thankful for our health. Lord, you know, that we've got eyes to see, yeah, that we've got ears right. to hear. Thank you, Father, for our health. That's a big one. I'm thankful for joy and laughter that I can laugh. Oh, Good topic. Yeah. I love it. Look, I'm thankful for you, for the Living Room Church family. You know, yeah, thankful for, sure. for the body of Christ, but, you know, within the body of Christ, I'm thankful for this assignment that you and I are connected as the Living Room Church family, and we get to do exploits for the kingdom of God yeah. on God's behalf in His name. I'm thankful for that. Yeah, Pam? Me too. I'm thankful for God's mercy that is new every morning. Whew. Man, so that's a powerful that. one. Well, you know what? I'm thankful for Earl Grey tea. <laughs> oh, I, I mean, and you know what's funny? I found out the other day that- Coffee. Yeah, <laughs> coffee. And I'm thankful that Earl Grey tea, I found out that the bergamot in it helps lower your cholesterol. Woo, well, that's a big one. That's another thing to be thankful for. It is. Okay, Pam? I'm thankful for answered prayers. I'm thankful that God always hears and he always wants to answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for the ability to write, to create, mm -hmm. to be songwriters, write messages like this one, to be able to write stories. I'm thankful for the ability to be creative. That's a powerful gift. That's a wonderful gift. I'm thankful gift. for that. Pam, I, one I more. I with you on that one. One more. Let's get um, to 10. 
Family and friends, God-given mm-hmm. family and friends, just so such thankful. a strength. What a blessing. Life. And you know, yeah. in that, if, if I can make this a number 11, I'm thankful for the people that are family and friends that have crossed over from mortality into immortality. Yeah. And we rejoice that they're not lost, but they're forever with Jesus. And we know exactly where they are. We miss them, but we're so thankful for them in Jesus' name. So that's how you do it. 10 things that we're thankful for. And you know, as we do that, did, did you notice even as we were doing that, it gives us perspective of how blessed we really are. You know, there was one time when you told me to do this, and I was, you know, I was being sour, and um, <laughs> I was just not grateful. I was just, I was just, you know, kind of griping over everything and not you looking negative. Come on. And, well, it was just because it just seemed like nothing was happening. You know, sometimes when you feel like you've hoped for something or prayed for something, and these things aren't manifesting as quick as you want them to. And I remember you said, "Honey, let's do this." Ten you know, 10 things being thankful and for. And you weren't excited about it. And that. I was not. I was like pouty for, for wanting to do that. But then when we started doing it, by the second or third one, I was like, all of a sudden this joy started stirring and my shoulders went back and a smile went on my face and I started becoming happy again and joyful. And everything I looked around and everything I was thankful for, the, you know, the sun shining, you know, the, everything yep. I was thankful for. It changes your perspective. It aligns your perspective. It's spiritual inventory and it is powerful, powerful. Listen to this story. There was an article by a respected journalist several years ago telling the story of a few Christians in North Korea secretly having a time of worship and prayer and reading God's word in their little rowboat out on the water. They were being the church. They were having church and celebrating the presence of God. As they pretended to fish, They each had brought a few torn pieces they had collected, pieces of the Bible to read. They were so thankful for every little bit of God's word they had salvaged. Suddenly, another boat appeared through the mist and they looked, they looked as, it looked as if there was a few officials headed directly toward them. The small group of Christians were very nervous because if this was the police, it would mean their arrest, probably torture and even death. They acted like they were fishing and moving the nets around kind of nervously. The other boat pulled alongside of them and individuals that they thought were police turned out to be missionaries. They greeted them as brothers and sisters in the Lord and they proceeded to tell them that they had come bearing gifts for them that were brand new Bibles for each of them. These precious believers began to cry and they held up the Bibles to their lips, kissing the cover over and over and over, thanking God for this great love and this mercy to seek them out and give them these priceless gifts. They were so thankful because they were each rich, rich with every word of the Bible from Genesis 1 through to the end of Revelation. My friend, are you rich? Do you thank God like that for the privilege of picking up your Bible and having unlimited access to his holy words? Thankfulness will cause the blindness to fall from your eyes and only then can you see what you really have access to. Let's face it. Some of us live in a geographical location where there is such a tendency to have dull eyes and dull, sloppy hearing. Thankfulness will once again allow the symphonic voice of God's precious Holy Spirit into your room, into our rooms, so that we can hear what we've been missing for so long. Have we allowed the holiday called Thanksgiving to rob us of the everyday requirements of being thankful? Thanksgiving should be every day, every day. We can do without the holiday and we can do without eating until we can't fasten our pants, right? But we can't do without the art of true thanksgiving to God. It's mandatory for a great life. It's mandatory for retaining what truly matters in life. A little boy was asked, what's Thanksgiving all about? He, of course, was thinking of the North American holiday and he replied, oh, that's easy. It's when my mommy stuffs breadcrumbs up a dead bird's back end. (laughs) That's kind of funny. But for a moment, just to ask yourself this, how would a son or a daughter of those Christians in North Korea respond to a question about Thanksgiving? I'm guessing that any child of one of those Christian parents who just got a whole Bible would say, Thanksgiving is having a whole Bible so my parents can read it, can read it to us and secretly in our home when the guards aren't looking. 
That's probably Thanksgiving. Yeah, that. that really is. That sets it all in perspective. The art of Thanksgiving is all about perspective, illumination in seeing the unseen. Oh, yeah. The art of Thanksgiving is right thinking, but unusual thinking, isn't it, Pam? That's so true. You know, let's say you want wisdom for something. You can't receive it or have it without Thanksgiving. I think that's the beginning of everything. Have you ever considered why there's so much need in the world? Everybody is so needy. It's not that there isn't enough in the world to meet the needs, but let's say uh, we need provision. Jesus said, will you ask? And he asked us, well, what do you have? You know, the art of Thanksgiving is a counterculture. It's unusual thinking to this world. It's it's very foreign That's to right. this world. It is. Thanksgiving is a mystery to so many people today. Uh, people don't seem to understand what it is. Nobody can even, they can point out problems, but they can't be thankful or recognize the opportunity that God's giving to provide for those situations. That's right. Unusual thinking on planet Earth is the mind of Christ. Remember, Jesus healed the 10 lepers, but only one of them had the unusual counterculture mindset to turn around and thank the one who had just saved him. You know, because of that, his miracle was expanded. That's right. And not only was he healed, but then Jesus bumped up his miracle by saying, you are completely Restore. Think about it, Pam. Like yeah. he got his nose back, probably. <laughs> he probably got his fingers back. Yeah. He's like, what in the world? I got some fingers back. He got his marriage back. He went home and it's like his wife was like, my heart was just turning toward you. He got his position at the airline back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why? Why? Because he did the unusual and he gave thanks. That was unusual. Can you believe it? One out of 10. Well, That's how unusual it was. He practiced the art of thanksgiving. Thank Thanksgiving is a spiritual weapon, folks. It's a spiritual weapon. Have you ever seen one of those hunting shows online or on TV? These hunters, they put on their camouflage, they grab a gun, a bow, and an arrow, then they hide themselves in a place where they'll get eyes on the target of their hopeful harvest. Did you notice how gentle I made that sound? Harvest? right? Pam and I were watching one of those hunts one time because believe it or not, it's very relaxing to listen to hunters whisper on and on about the direction of the wind. <laughs> and in this particular hunt, it was a young woman, Pam, who looked like she weighed about 120 pounds, hoping to harvest a bull elk on the mountain range of Colorado. She was armed with her compound bow and her deadly arrows. Now, without her weapon, this small little brunette lady wouldn't stand a chance against a 1,000 pound mighty bull elk. He'd just throw her off his mountain, right? We watched her as she quietly waited at the edge of this bull elk with a gigantic set of antlers towering over his head, and he walked cautiously and unknowingly closer and closer to her. She loaded her arrow. She pulled back on her bow, and when Mr. Elk got within range, she let it fly, and the next thing you know, this small little five-foot-five woman was enjoying an elk steak by the campfire. My she God. harvested. She harvested something big with a comparably tiny, tiny weapon. You and I, we're called to use the sharp precision weapon called Thanksgiving to harvest the blessings of God. There's so much talk about seed time and harvest in the area of spiritual life, but many believers are untrained or without knowledge of how to harvest. That's part of your responsibility. You need tools to harvest, weapons to lay hold of the big stuff that is otherwise impossible. Weapon of choice? Some compound thanksgiving. Hunting is an art, you know. Good hunters study, they practice, they prepare, and good hunters are patient. If you want to harvest something great, big, even a spiritual trophy, so that you can tell others, look what the Lord has done, you need to practice the art of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is the ultimate harvest weapon. So think about your potential creative power right now. Yeah. Well, you know, when you're thankful, when we're truly thankful, we create something powerful that didn't exist 
before that. Oh, you know? that's good. Thanksgiving is this new powerful thing, but then suddenly we're born into an existence and God consciousness and a preciousness in a time that He calls, and He calls it a sacrifice of praise. Right, Psalm 50, verse 23. Read that, fam. Yeah. He who offers up a sacrifice of thanksgiving honors me. Oh, that's powerful. Thanksgiving is truly the art of creating something out of nothing. Are you looking for miracles to occur in your life? You must learn the art of thanksgiving. You must discover God's secret weapon for truly obtaining the harvest. The art of thanksgiving is the ability to create something from nothing. I dare you to try it. Ask God's Holy Spirit for help, guidance, and then truthfully begin to be thankful. Express thankfulness to a person. I mean the authentic kind. Do it as an act of honor to God. Thank your boss. Be grateful to your spouse. Thank your parents. William Faulkner, the famous American novelist and writer, once said this, Gratitude is a quality similar to electricity. It must be produced and discharged and used up in order to exist at all. You know, unthankfulness is a sign, is a prophetic sign, I believe, of the times. Mm. It's, it's like a, a warning sign that is telling humanity that something very bad is about to come on the earth. Wow. Unthankfulness, I believe this. And we heard from Romans that, in Romans 1, that unthankfulness, it darkens our minds and it makes our thinking worthless. So check out 2 Timothy. It says, uh, but understand this, that in the last days, dangerous times, of great stress and trouble will come. Difficult days that will be hard to bear. For people will be lovers of themselves, narcissistic, self-focused, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful. That means unthankful. And unholy and profane. So skip to verse five. Pam. Okay. Holding to a form of outward godliness, religion, Although they have denied its power, you know, we're supposed to avoid those people and keep them away from us. <laughs> now skip to verse okay. 7. Always learning and listening to anybody who will teach them, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Unthankfulness. Oh, you can't know the truth or recognize it if if you are ungrateful, unthankful. The art of thanksgiving is all about seeing, recognizing, humbly saying thank you, acknowledging the gift no matter how small or how great. Insecure people tend to be unthankful people. They don't want to acknowledge what they've been given because they're, they're set on demoting anyone around them in hopes that they'll feel better about themselves, feel bigger as they self focus. Yeah, that's right. You know, I think of different songs and one of the hymns mom used to sing, count your many blessings. Love it. You know, name them one by one. And that's actually an act of humility. You know, it, it requires humility to be thankful. To acknowledge the gift and the giver requires humility. The blessing and the blessing. That's so good. Yeah. Thankfulness is God's will for your life, my friend. That's how crucial this is. It's God's will for your life. First Thessalonians 5, verse 18. Pam, read that. Okay. In every situation, no matter what the circumstances, be thankful and continually give thanks to God, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Notice it said, in every situation, in every circumstance, no matter what the circumstance, you're not thankful for the circumstance necessarily, but in that situation. Right. Well, since giving thanks is this critical, it's actually God's will for your life, let me give you a few practical tips on the art of thanksgiving. Number one, be specific. You got to be specific. You honor someone when you do an accurate accounting of what they've done or what they've given. Don't be vague. That implies that you don't appreciate the cost, the investment, or that you're arrogant and trying to be dismissive. Yes, thank you, little peasant, for your, your little gift there. Run along now, run along. <laughs> oh, I've heard that, haven't you? Number two, make it about the other person. Oh, that's good. 
Make it about the other person. Don't ruin a good thank you by making it all about you. This isn't this isn't all about you. This isn't your opportunity to shine, but you need to make the other person shine. Sometimes being subtle or discreet is the corresponding respect due to the other person. I like that. I like that. Number three, speak their language. You know, I have a nephew who was given something very special from his dad. And I asked him, I said, hey, did you thank him? And he said, oh, yeah, sure. I said, thanks. I think he said I texted him thanks or something like that. I told him, I said, look, your thank you has to register. It's got to be heard. you got to speak your dad's language. Take him out for a nice dinner and say, you know what, dad? You really, really bless me. He did that. And the message was received loud and clear. Plus, he made a new great memory with his father. In some cases, a handwritten note or a thank you card carries that expression. People like that. Maybe it's eye contact and a heartfelt handshake. Speak the language of the other person. If thankfulness isn't honorable, you don't truly know the art of it. When you're thanking God, you got to speak God's language. Look at what his Bible says. You see, that's what we're doing today in this message. We're examining the true art of speaking thanksgiving. So speak the language. Number four, include God. When you include God, things go better. (laughs) They go better than expected. That's true. You know, in James 1, 17, it says, Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights comes down from God. So include God in every situation, you know. You know, another person may have blessed you, but remember that it's God that used that person to accomplish the good things in your life. So thank that person, but always include God in the thoughts, knowing that He's the rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. So it's all about God and what He has motivated other people to do. So always include God in the situation. I love that, Pam. When you hear someone talking about being a self-made man or a self-made woman, be on the lookout for a great void of thankfulness. They tend to use people instead of recognizing people for their invaluable contribution to life. We all need help, but only the smart get help. That's where the art of thanksgiving comes in. Thanksgiving will help you discern good, discern good people, discern good help. You've been looking for an answer in your life possibly maybe a direction, wondering about the future, or a family circumstance that seems too hard or even too difficult to think about. You need a next step, my friend. You need a mandate from God. Is He going to ask you to do the impossible? No. That's what He does. He's telling you right now that His will for you is thankfulness. But you've got to do it correctly. All relationships have protocol, and God's is to come into his gates with what? Thanksgiving. Let's read that one more time. Psalm 100, verse 4. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to God and bless his wonderful name. Let me pray for you today, a prayer of thanksgiving. As we go forward into this new season into this next destiny that God has for your life. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for the privilege today of acknowledging your presence in our lives. Thank you for my dear friend. We need you. And I pray for my brother and my sister. At this very, very important time in history, I ask that you lead us, that you help us, and that you guide each one of us. Open up their understanding to your word and how how to utilize this amazing tool called Thanksgiving. An archer needs skill. A marksman needs accuracy. God, you are not a random being and neither is your plan for their life random. Help us to understand the critical need for skill in working our faith, Father. Thank you. Thank you for all the help that you're providing for us right now. We give you praise and thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for sharing this very important time with us. Get our free app with the daily prayer and join us for this Tuesday Talks for an exciting, interactive question and answer and prayer time where we talk about what's important to you. At Living Room Church, you are loved. And together, we live life strong.